are not is, is that Stokes from, Fair, from Fairport High School, Drew Fizer's Scott Ingram, and Jay Bonneville. And Jack is going to describe an investigation of brushless DC motor communication techniques. Brushless DC motors, or BLDC motors, are cleaner and more reliable than traditional brush motors. For this reason, a number of brushless motors are used in the Omega laser system. Two examples of these applications are the off-axis parabola inserter and the target positioner. The target positioner, shown here, is a small shuttle which travels up and down this tube to transport the target to the target chamber before a laser shot. This shuttle is powered by a small 8-inch brushless DC motor mounted here. During a laser shot, this motor can be exposed to extreme conditions, including a high-intensity electromagnetic field. This can sometimes result in damage to the motor's internal hall sensors that govern its commutation. When these sensors are damaged, the motor is rendered inoperable using currently installed hardware. This means that it is effectively stranded within the tube and must be manually extracted before it can be repaired. This is a long and difficult process. However, if the motor could be, dri could be driven without the use of the hull effect sensors, it could be extracted under its own power and recovered for repair much more easily. This, this uh, project uh, investigated the use of sensorless commutation to aid in the extraction of the motor in the event of hull sensor failure. A test fixture was created that is capable of driving these brushless motors in the event of hull sensor failure. In summary, brushless DC motor commutation techniques were investigated. All sensors may be damaged by electromagnetic fields created by a laser shot. Then. Sensorless commutation would allow for the operation of a brushless DC motor in the event of all sensor failure. A test fixture was designed to rescue brushless DC motors in the event that, uh, yeah, in the event of failure. Here's a brief outline of the topics this presentation will address. Uh, yeah. The agility to the laboratory for laser energetics, commutation theory, uh, the comparison of commutation techniques, and the requirements and final implementation of the test fixture. Here is a basic diagram of a brushless DC motor. This is the rotor, which contains a permanent magnet. This is the part of the rotor that spins during normal operation. This outside section is called a stator. It remains stationary. The static contains these three phase windings. These phase windings essentially act as electromagnets. When the microcontroller runs current through them, a magnetic field is produced depending on the direction of current flow. By continually varying these magnetic fields, you can keep the rotor spinning at the desired speed. These three Hall effect sensors detect the magnitude of the magnetic field produced by the rotor. By comparing the relative readings from the Hall sensors, the microcontroller can determine the approximate orientation of the rotor. The microcontroller can then use this information to change the states of the phase windings and to keep the rotor turning. This is called commutation. If the hall sensors were to fail, the microcontroller would no longer know the orientation of the rotor and would not be able to do this thing. Unlike hall effect commutation, sensorless commutation does not rely on any physical sensors. Instead, it reads the back electromotive force, or back EMF. The back EMF is induced when the spinning rotor's magnetic field interacts with the phase windings. At any given point, two of the phases have either positive or negative voltage across them, while the third is left inactive with no current driven through it. This inactive phase is used to read the back EMF at that point. The back EMF varies as a sine wave as the rotor spins. It can be used to determine when to commutate the motor. Here's a diagram of the waveforms present in sensorless computation. These three waveforms represent the voltage across the three phase windings. If at any time it is always either positive, negative, or inactive. Here's the back EMF as it would be read by phase A only. The back EMF can only be accurately read when the phase is inactive in these portions. The frequency of the back EMF can be used to determine when commutation should occur. Because only the back EMF is needed, no Hall effect sensors are needed. Here's a table comparing Hall effect commutation with sensorless commutation. Hall effect commutation uses Hall sensor to directly sense the rotor's magnetic fields. It is capable of driving at any speed and any load. 
limited only by the motor. To start the motor, it uses a smooth acceleration ramp. It relies on hollow effect sensors, which may be damaged during a laser shot. And it allows good control over any load condition and at low speed. In contrast, sensorless commutation relies on reading the back EMF induced in standard windings by the spinning rotor. It is only reliable at medium to high speeds. This is because in order to reliably read the back EMF, the rotor must be spinning fast enough to induce a usable voltage. It may shake at startup. This is because when the motor is stationary, it produces no back EMF. Therefore, the motor controller must assume an arbitrary state for the phase windings to start the motor. It is very reliable because it relies on no physical components. However, low speed and position control are not possible. The test fixture to be created had several requirements. First, it had to be capable of driving a brushless DC motor using sensorless feedback. It had to be capable of a drive signal. 24 volts at 5 amps or greater. It had to use commercial off-the-shelf equipment if possible. It had to be self-contained and portable, and of a convenient size and weight. And lastly, it had to be relatively inexpensive. Here's a plot diagram of the project, of the test fixture as implemented by this project. The test fixture is focused around the MTL BLDC motor control board by Luminary Micro. This board houses the LM3S8971 microcontroller, which is based on ARM Cortex M3 architecture. This microcontroller must read a variety of inputs and use them to control a brushless DC motor. Among its digital inputs are push buttons for forward and reverse, toggle switches to select between motor control parameters, and limit switches to ensure a safe operating range. It also reads a potentiometer. This allows the user to control the speed over a large range of values in real time. The microcontroller uses pulse width modulation, or PWM, signals to drive two of the motor's phases at a time, while the third phase is left inactive. This inactive phase reports the back EMF back to the microcontroller. The microcontroller must use this back EMF to commutate the motor while also handling high-level input from the user through the switches. This project involved a heavy modification of the pre-existing luminary micro motor control source code. This code was written in the C programming language. I wrote control, high level control algorithms to control the motor using external switches. Potentiometer was added to allow the user to input values using an analog input. And the motor control parameters were modified to make it, to make it capable of driving the specific motors using the target chamber. Here's a picture of my final uh, fixture in its enclosure. You can see here the various inputs I discussed. Here are connectors to connect it to an external power source and also the motor phase windings and the switches. In conclusion, brushless DC motor commutation techniques were investigated, and it was found that sensorless commutation is adequate to achieve motor actuation. All sensors may fail when exposed to intense electromagnetic fields, resulting from a laser fusion event in the target chamber. Sensorless commutation would enable operation of the brushless DC motors in the target chamber with damaged all sensors. The test fixture was designed to rescue brushless DC motors from the target chamber if the hall sensor were to fail. I'd like to thank my advisors, Scott Ingram and Dave Bonneville, for their support and guidance along the way, and also, of course, Dr. Craxton for making this program possible. We did have an actual incident where the hull sensors failed on the target positioner, and uh, one of the technicians came out and uh, did some magic with a laptop and was able to recover the control of the motor. Is the approach that was used then the same as you developed, or did you come up with a new way of doing it? Um, I do not think sensorless commutation has been used in lead at all. That was possibly using the encoder which is a different method that it uses to determine the orientation. That can also fail, which is what usually fails, but sometimes this can operate without either the encoder or the hallback sensors. Mm -hmm.